this video we're going to be looking at W equals mg. And we've got two guests on this video, so stay tuned. Now, W equals mg is basically that same formula, F equals ma, because W is the weight. And weight, of course, is a force. It's a force which acts downwards towards the Earth, and it happens due to gravity. So whenever we got things which are moving in the vertical plane, we know there's weight involved. So if I replace weight as F, and of course M can stay as M, and G is the acceleration caused by gravity, so of course it is acceleration as well. So basically you can see it's still that formula F equals MA. It's just instead of F, we've got W, the weight, and instead of A, we've got the acceleration due to gravity. And the acceleration due to gravity, we write it as G. But the actual value is 9.8 to one decimal place. So depending on questions, you can leave it as just simply G or you can write it as 9.8. Okay, so here I've got a particle and it's at rest, it's not moving. But it has got some forces still on it, even though it's not moving. Remember, every particle has got its weight acting downwards. Now I've written its weight as 2g. Now where did that come from? Remember the weight equals mg. m being the mass, and of course the mass of this particle is 2 kilograms, times g. And I've, and I've left g as g, so it's 2 times g, which is 2g. Of course you can write g as 9.8, so 2 times 9.8 would have been 19.6. But we often just leave it as g. Had the particle been 8 kilograms, it would have been 8g, 12 kilograms, 12g, 20 kilograms, 20g, and so on. So whenever you know the mass, you can put the weight down straight away. It's just whatever the mass is multiplied by g. Now, if this particle simply had a force acting downwards, it would have been moving downwards, but it's not. Reason being, it's because the surface is also giving a reaction force back, stopping it moving. And that reaction force is equal and opposite. So you don't really need to do some working out to know that reaction force must be 2g, hence leaving it balanced. But I'm just going to show you the forces equation would do to work out actually what R is, just so you're used to writing out those equations. So, okay, so I'm going to be resolving vertically and I put upwards as positive, it really wouldn't matter which direction you put as positive. So upward forces, we have the R, so we put the R in first, and the 2G is acting opposite to the direction I said it was positive, so I'm going to put it as minus 2G. Okay, so that's all of our forces. So with the formula F equals MA, I've got the F part done. Now I need to equal this to MA. M of course is two, times acceleration. Now what's acceleration here? It's not moving, so acceleration is simply zero. And rather than putting two times zero, a lot of people just write zero straight away because they know that it's simply zero. Now I can just simply rearrange this and we get R equals 2G as we expected. Now that surface is gone, so this particle is not simply going to be staying still. It would have been moving downwards, but we've also got an upward force here applied of 30 newtons. So take a moment and guess which direction you reckon it's moving. And you should have said upwards because 2 times 9.8 is 19.6 and 30 is greater than 19.6. So let's work out the acceleration in this case. So we'll resolve vertically and we'll put upwards as positive since it's moving in the upwards direction. And of course we've got the 30 in the upwards direction and the 2g we need to put as negative since it's in the opposite direction. And that's all our forces, we're going to equal this to ma. m is of course 2, and a we don't know, so we just leave it as a. And now we can simplify this, we'll start by changing g for 9.8, and now we can just put that into our calculator, and last step divide both sides by 2. And we've worked out the acceleration, 5.2, so it wasn't too bad. So that's the thing with vertical motion, you always have weight involved. And you must get quick at putting that weight on your diagram straight away. It's just the mass times g. g being 
Okay, so here's our first guest, my older son, and he's in a rocket. And let's say this rocket is still on the Earth, so it still has that weight. Because if it was in space, the weight wouldn't actually be there because there's no gravity there. So let's go ahead and put some forces on this. Okay, so this is the force caused by the engine, 9,000 newtons. So it's not really a powerful rocket, but that's okay because I don't want my son going to space anyways. And what are we forgetting here? You must realize that we know the mass. The mass is 200 kilograms. So the mass is 200 kilograms. What is the weight? The weight is M times G, mass times G. So it's 200 times G. So you can put that on as well, 200 G. Okay, so let's now go ahead and work out the acceleration. Since it's moving upwards, we'll put the upwards direction as positive. Okay, so here I'm telling the examiner that I'm resolving vertically and I'm putting upwards as positive. So we've got the 9,000 upwards and the 200 G we're going to put as negative since it's in the opposite direction. Okay, and of course, all of that is equal to MA. Now, what is the mass here? The mass is 200. And the A, of course, we need to work out. So we'll just leave it as A. Now, the left-hand side, you just put in your calculator and you get 7,040. Last step, we just divide both sides by 200 and we get our acceleration. So our acceleration is 35.2. So it wasn't too bad, this question. And here we can see the rocket taking off. is gone. Now here's our second guest and this is my youngest son and he's on some sort of a lift. Now let's put some forces on otherwise the lift will just fall down. We can see the mass of the lift is 20 kg and straight away we can put the weight downwards as 20 g mass times gravity and my son's mass is 15 kg so his weight will be 15 times g. 15 G and we put that on as well and there's a force moving it upwards and that force is an unknown T and whenever you have a rope applying a force usually we call that force tension and that tension force here is unknown so we just left it as T but we do know the acceleration the lift is moving up with acceleration of 2 meters per second squared and we need to work out that tension so we're going to do some resolving Okay, so I put the upwards direction as positive since it's moving upwards. So let's put down the positive forces first. Of course, the only force moving in the positive direction is the T. And then we've got two forces in the negative direction. So let's put those down. We've got 20G, we put that as minus 20G, and minus 15G, because that's also in the opposite direction. Now that's all of our forces. And remember, all the forces equals to MA. So what is the mass? Now for the mass, we're gonna put the combined mass. It's 35 kilograms, the combined mass. And that's times by A. But A, we do know it, so I just put times two there. Let's just simplify this a little bit. And now we can work out T. We'll first work out 35 times G, and G is, remember, 9.8. And we get 343. Then we'll move that 343 force to the other side. And we've found out what tension is. It's 413 newtons. Okay, so let's look at this question. So we need to find the force the lift applies on the baby. Now, you can see I've put a new force on there. It's the reaction force. Of course, the baby is putting a force down on the lift, and the lift is giving an equal and opposite force back, and we call that the reaction force. Now, be careful and don't say the reaction force is 15 G because this system is moving. If the lift is moving downwards, you, you feel slightly weightless, meaning you're applying a smaller weight to the actual lift. And if the lift's moving upwards, sometimes you feel heavier, don't you? So then you're applying a larger force to the lift. So when things are moving, it's not as simple as that. So you can't just think that the baby is applying a 15 G force on the lift. We're going to have to do some resolving. To work out the reaction in this case, we're going to have to do some resolving. So just keep in mind that that reaction force is basically opposing the force the baby is putting on the lift. It's giving that equal force back. 
So by working at the reaction force, you've worked out not only what force the lift is giving on the baby, you've also worked out the force the baby is giving on the lift. So if they change the question, it's answering both questions. So keep that in mind because these questions do get a bit tricky. Okay, so to work out the reaction force, we're only going to look at the baby. Nothing else exists. So we're just going to be resolving all the forces on the baby alone. So let's resolve upwards. Of course, I wrote resolving as well R because we've already got an R in the question. So we're resolving upwards and the only force on the baby upwards is the R. Remember that T force is not on the actual baby. So we're not going to put that T on there. So the baby's only got that reaction force upwards. And of course it's got its weight downwards, 15 G. And I put that as negative. And that's equal to MA. The baby's mass is 15 kg. And the acceleration we do know. The lift and the baby are moving with the same velocity and have the same acceleration. We don't expect them to have different amounts. Let's simplify this. So we put G as 9.8 here. And that you can do in your calculator. 9.8 times 15 is 147. And we're simply now going to move that minus 147 to the other side. And we've got the reaction. It's 177 newtons. So the baby must be putting a force of 177 newtons on the lift. The lift is giving an equal and opposite reaction force back of 177 newtons. And there we have it. I hope you found that video useful. Support us by liking, subscribing, and share this with your friends. And if you still got some more questions on anything, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where you'll find your questions answered.